Hey, how you doing? This is Steve Sims, and you're about to listen to another episode of The Art of Making Things Happen, the podcast. i got Will Pemble on this episode, and he's the first URL millionaire, which means he sold a URL that he bought before GoDaddy for a million bucks. NFTs, blockchain, crypto. If you've got any questions on this, that'd be sold by listening to Will Pemble. Enjoy the episode. Hey, Will. Welcome to the show. Steve, thanks for having me, mate. Now, I've got to admit, your bio, your bio is pretty cool, and I'm going to jump in right at the deep end. You actually sold, you built and sold the domain web.com, and you're actually one of the top domain name millionaires. I've got to ask, first of all, how long ago and how lucky were you to be able to get the URL web.com? Well, well, long and lucky, I guess. <laughs> really long and really lucky ago. So, so the the web.com story started in the late '90s, where um, where we began that business, and we we were one of the first domain name registrars in the business. Um, and and we're kind of in what's old is what's new against territory. When I started selling domain names at web.com in in that company, the first question a customer would ask me was, "What's a domain name?" And that was we we every single transaction we started at that super you know foundational layer first principles and and we grew one of the 20 biggest uh, web hosting and domain name companies on earth in uh, in about 6 or 7 years it was a pretty cool pretty cool adventure i like the way you said that you know we're in new old territory what do you mean by that well well like You've spoken to a lot of people about, say, say crypto, blockchain, NFT, and whenever you whenever you mention one of those three things to, I'm going to say 95 percent of the people in the, the the world, certainly the business world, what's the first question that people generally ask you? Yeah, what is it? What is it? And so, so that's where we are. We're just we're we're right back in the NFT, blockchain, crypto world. We're right back to where we started. Where, where back in the day, I would say, oh, well, a domain name, it's like an address, like my address, 36 Park Avenue, that's where I live, and that's a physical address. Well, a domain name, it's an internet address. It's like digital, you know, and then you know the deal, right? Everybody knows what a domain name is now, but 25 years ago, we didn't. And and the second question people asked was like, well, that sounds kind of like a scam to me. Is that just complete nonsense? And that's the second question everybody wants to know about crypto blockchain NFT. Um, and so, so when I say what's old is new again, is like, I, you know, I describe myself as like a web one pioneer because I was there in the beginning. And if you've, if you've ever had an alternate domain name suggested when you search for a domain name, you're welcome because me and my team invented that. Um, and so, so you're welcome or I'm sorry, depending on your, your perspective, but so I'm a web one pioneer. I spent a long time in the internet business, a web two leader. And now I describe myself as kind of a web three futurist. And it's not because I have a crystal ball. It's just that I've been around a long time. And it's the same questions. Um, like, like can, So if I were to ask you, what is the blockchain? What would your answer be? Wow. Um, okay. Being very direct, I would probably say there is... There is more I don't know than I do know. So I would say that it was an unregulated, an unmanipulated way of registering currently its biggest asset of cryptocurrency. Okay. So I don't know, 20, 30 words, right? Yeah. Big registry. Yeah. Right. So my answer to that question is if somebody were to say, well, why don't you do it? Why don't you ask me what the blockchain is? What is the blockchain, Will? Well, Steve, I'm glad you asked. The blockchain is an encrypted spreadsheet, full stop. Dude, that's all the F it is. It's a database. It's just a place where we write lines of information, structured information, like a database. And uh, whew, sorry, I dropped my cup. And and that's all it is. It's just an encrypted database. It's a very well encrypted database, right? Once it's encrypted, you've got a better chance of turning a chicken nugget into a chicken than you have of decrypting and modifying that line in the spreadsheet. But it's just a spreadsheet, bro. It's not special. Now, but the, I, I, yeah. I've got an arguing point here. Um, oh. it, should be, it should be noted that you are one of the first web domain millionaires. And that simply means that you managed to sell your domain for over a million dollars. Is that correct? Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. So yeah, right place, right time. 
here's so here's the argument with you. All sure. right? And I'm I'm looking to, to to get your response on this. You got into domain names when everyone was asking the same kind of ton- context questions now. Well, what is that? And secondly, sounds like a scam. Okay. That is the the two standard responses you get with NFTs um, uh, that, that are currently going on. Yes. The downside, or not the downside, but the change that is happening today compared to back in the 1990s. Back in the 90s, the two, the two responses were, what is it and is it a scam? We've got three responses today. We've got the what is it, is it a scam? But we've also got a massive amount of FOMO. You know, that third yep. trigger now is, what is it? Is it a scam? And, oh, my God, I don't want to miss out on the next Google URL. You know, I would have wished I'd have been there when I could have bought web.com from GoDaddy, probably even before GoDaddy even existed. Um, yeah, before. So Yeah, so the point is that FOMO is driving a, a a mass mentality of people trying to jump in when they're ill-informed. How do you control the, those people that are being directed by FOMO? Okay, well, well, FOMO, I'm, a, I'm also a, a big fan of like super simplifying things. And so if you don't know, FOMO means fear of missing out, right? It's what keeps us from going to bed at night. Um, I don't want to miss out on the thing. Pemble's a domain name millionaire, whatever the hell that means. I I don't want to I don't want to miss that again. He's no more special than I am. Why didn't I do those things? Right. And so that's so so as we see these iterations, you know, web one, web two, web three, and they're very simple, they're very simple uh delineators between those spaces. Um Yes, there's folks, and we, and we'll hear like the Beeple story, right? Beeple's this artist who did something, and he sold an NFT, and he made twenty million dollars in twenty minutes or whatever. You know, you hear all of these crazy stories. Yes, but but Steve, these stories are no different than the Web's two stories, like Zuckerberg, right? Zuckerberg, a high, you know, a, a, a Harvard dropout, admittedly a brilliantly smart guy, could billion dollars, and and you know, you could argue in a way that like the reason he created Facebook is he just, he wanted to get laid. Right. I mean, that's like, that's so, okay. That's, you know, it's, it, it drives a fair number of my decisions as well. Um, but why weren't we Zuckerberg? And, and so like the, the FOMO that you're talking about right now existed far and wide in Silicon Valley back in the late nineties, early two thousands, as soon as somebody saw, you know, a Twitter come true or a Facebook come true or Uber and Lyft, you know, all of those companies, it's the same thing. I would argue that, that like FOMO is not new. I mean, you know, it's a freaking acronym. It can't be new. It's been around, it's, it's been around so long. We've figured out a shorthand term for it so we can talk about it faster. People want to get into crypto blockchain NFT for, for different reasons. FOMO is, is one of them. Um, I tend to take when it when it comes to investing in NFT or investing in crypto or all that. My you know my advice to my clients and friends and everybody and me is you might want to think about that as kind of like Vegas money, right? So like I'm going to Vegas. I've got ten thousand bucks in my suitcase. I'm going to go you know throw it away. Maybe I'll make money. Maybe not. But like whatever happens, I'm okay without the money that I'm bringing to Vegas. And that's a very sound rule. It's the Vegas rule of financial management, right? So, so when I'm investing in crypto, when I'm investing in NFT, doing all of those things, I, I just, I implore people, don't bank on, you know, your little hippo NFT, putting your kids through college, because it's not, it's not going to be worth dinky do um, in the future. What, what an NFT is really good for five years from now, after FOMO wears off and all the crazy and the fun is, you know, kind of subsided a little bit, what fo- what NFT is going to be really good for is selling a house, doing a title search, writing a line to that encrypted spreadsheet that is the blockchain so that I can sell my house in 15 minutes instead of 15 days. And, and so there's, so like, 
every technology starts out with like crazy fun porn, you know, like all of the, you know, all of the new technologies get tested out with like either people trying to fly off cliffs or do porn. You know, it's just like, it's all the silly fun uses of this new technology because we can't really figure out what to do with it. I've seen this over and over again. And what I promise you is that NFTs are going to be used to validate the most important transactions on earth within a decade. That's just how it's going to go. And so anybody who thinks it's not going to happen, anybody who thinks it's not, we're, you know, the, you know, we're going to solve the environmental problems we already have for 80% of the blockchain, blah, blah, blah. So I don't think FOMO is new either. I think that's what drives innovation. That's what drives entrepreneurial crazy people to new, to new uh, businesses and industries. Now, you mentioned about uh, Facebook. Facebook wasn't the first. We had MySpace and Friendster. Uh, yeah, he just did it better than anybody else. Exactly. And yeah. I don't, I also, he wasn't, <laughs> this is a funny thing to say, he wasn't as arrogant, but I remember when <laughs> Friendster thinking that they were worth 10 times more than what they were offered. And then yeah. Mark came along and we now have, uh, we now have that going on. So, and who yeah. has a Friendster account anymore? So that no. is that. But in order um, for a business to succeed, in order for that, in, in order for social media to succeed, which is clearly a web two thing, right? You stop being the consumer and you start being the product. That's the difference yes, the concept, between web yeah. one and web two, right? In order for that to succeed, we need, we, the business, we society, we, I don't know who, we need to lift somebody way, way, way up right? So, so Zuckerberg's business wasn't any better than MySpace or Friendster or AOL or any of those. It was just time to lift somebody out of obscurity, make them a billionaire so that we could get the tens of thousands of other companies and other businesses into the game because FOMO. So, so to your point, Zuckerberg, you know, in one way, is and this is not all he is, but he is a very good example of how well one can leverage FOMO. Yeah, that is true. I, I also want to quickly flip back to your comment about Beeple. For any people that aren't aware of it, Beeple was a very successful NFT release that literally made millions. It was also a um, an NFT of a pixel, which was basically a black dot that got sold in Sotheby's. So what was that, $20 million? Something stupid? It's so stupid. <laughs> it is. But for every, and that's what you need to realize, for every one of those kind of, hey, I did a picture of a peanut and it sold for a billion dollars, there's a billion NFTs that have done nothing. You bet. And it's crickets. Um, yeah. So you need, you need to tread carefully with NFTs. There's a new trend within nfts having them actioned as a utility as well now yeah. we released and i'm not here to pitch it we released an nft and we had it connected to my book launch you know buy this one come to my party buy this one get an yeah. autograph we added an outside real life utility to the purchase of that nft yep. and also like gary v's done the same and a whole bunch of people have started using them as utilities buy this nft you get to go to the event how do you think that that is maybe a slight back off just to get people used to the NFTs before they close down that utility component? Or do you think the utility area is going to remain? Sure. Okay. Now, you know, NFT stuff, you're savvy in that you've made one of your own. So let me ask you that. Let me ask you the question um, that a lot of people ask, which is when you're doing an, when you're doing an NFT project, if you're going to launch an NFT project, What's the most important thing to your NFT project? For me, I would say the community. Boom, of course. And that's the answer that we all know and we all give. So, so like, so the community is super duper important. Um, and, and why is a community important? The reason the community is important is because a because community, I think in this context, and you can you can push back if I'm if you think I'm wrong, because that happens with alarming regularity. Um, but the reason that well, the, the other word for community is trust. If I'm part of a community or if I'm a leader of a community, then the members of that community trust me. And so that's why community is so important because we inherently distrust things that we don't fully, fully understand. Mm -hmm. And crypto NFT blockchain are way up on the list of things we don't fully understand for some reasons that I've also got opinions about. <laughs> but, and so I think. I think community is the first thing. I think utility 
is is super important. Now, we've called them utilities just to further obscure the effing meaning of what the hell we're talking about, right? Because like you say, utility to me, I think like electricity, water, the guy that comes and picks up the garbage, stuff like that. I don't think about perks, but but so when somebody talks to me about, it's like, hey, what are utilities and why are they important? You know, my first thing is, it's like, okay, community is the most important thing. Utility is the second most important thing. And right up there is let's stop calling them utilities and let's call them perks. What is my free gift with purchase? What do I get out of this? And and the and the crypto blockchain NFT crowd, they love to stick with the words that people don't really understand, right? Blockchain blocks us from understanding what the hell it is, which is an encrypted spreadsheet. It's no more complicated than that. It's a freaking database. And I've got 25 years in this business. I'm a, you know, I could I could testify in front of Congress. I'm qualified to describe it as such. And and so so let's go back to utilities. Well, let me ask you this. When you did your you when you did your book NFT, yep. Yep. um, what were the perks? What did I get if I if I got your NFT? What would be my my so I had what? four I had four NFTs. Uh well, I have four NFTs. Each one of them has a different price gauge. So each, you know, each steps up in, in price. Starts yep. off with an autographed book, 10 personalized books. Um, the third one gets you access to my launch party in Hollywood later on this year. And the fourth one gets all of those things plus something special. And I haven't told anyone what it is. Nice. Okay. Well, let's 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 keep it a secret. Now. So, so, and, you know, as a business guy, what I'm going to assume is I'm going to assume that part of the revenue that you're generating through this NFT is going to be used to fund those things. Yes. Um, now, does everybody get the same thing or is there some sort of like, or is it like a pack of baseball cards where like, maybe you get the Derek Jeter card and maybe you don't? Actually, no, that's a good point. But no, everyone, everyone that gets... Anyone that buys an NFT gets the um, components of the prior NFT, so it's a, it's like a it's a growing goodie bag of stuff nice. that they get. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, what happens? What happens to an NFT project these days? Right? Because, like, right? There's one Beeple. There's one Zuckerberg. That yep. shit's over. And you and me are not those guys. <laughs> so it's like too bad, <laughs> right? And um, but. FOMO's got us in it, right? And that's and and that's not just not just from the perspective of the person who's investing in, or I don't even call it that, who's buying NFTs, um, but also from the people who are like, you know, figuring out this technology, figuring out ways to drop an NFT. Um, you know, we're we're working on one that's that's designed to fund a couple of projects that are near and dear. Um, but at no point have I suggested the remotest possibility that this little JPEG is going to be worth a hill of beans ever to the, to the end user. It's going to be valuable exactly according to what you think it's worth. Just like, you know, a, if you're a collector of Pez dispensers or baseball cards or coffee cups or, you know, Disney pins or whatever, right? Um, the, the idea that an NFT is a sound investment at this point, at this point, there are sound crypto investments you can make. They have to do with cryptocurrency, not NFTs. I think that's the biggest divider that people are I, I, I'm really starting to get their, their head around. A currency you can look at and go, okay, how can I trade it? How can I use it? How can I uh, work with it across the world? And of course, the beautiful thing about, about cryptocurrency is the person spending it in China and the person spending it in Connecticut, it's the same value. Yeah. Um, and it's a step up from, say, PayPal in the fact that we can transfer it within milliseconds. Yep. Um, so I could buy a good in you know, Korea, and I've got no transfer fees or anything like that, like I would a bank, and there's a link, and there's a transaction for anyone but not the government. So you've also got this kind of like, whoa, it's hush hush, it's it's secret, therefore you must be doing something wrong. There's always that kind of like, you know, doom and gloom around it that the government like to perpetuate when they haven't got their handle on it. Sure. But that's with cryptocurrency. With NFT, as you said, you're buying a JPEG. You're yeah. buying a little picture that if I looked it up here and took a screenshot, 
I've also got the picture. Now I yep. don't have own I don't have ownership rights of it, but I yep. can look at it. It's like me basically taking a picture of a Monet and going, Well, I can see it, you know. Why do I need to own it? So the thing that makes me giggle is that people are trying to sue people in the world of NFTs as a scam when all you've been promised is a JPEG. Yeah. But, but that's also, yeah, people are trying to sue people, you know, and it's like, it's really tough, right? I mean, you can, no matter what side of the, you know, too much, too little, not enough, wrong kind government, you know, whatever end of that argument you come down on, here's what I know. When somebody kicks your door down and comes into the house, the police are entirely welcome in your house, right? The government is like, Oh, so glad you're here because robbers, right? And so like, so like, oh, I want to do my own thing. And we, you know, you hear a whole lot of that right until somebody scams you out of your crypto wallet. And then all of a sudden we're starting to think, you know, if somebody stole my ATM card, I could call the Bank of America and say, hey, somebody stole my ATM card. And they would just like back up all that stuff because the FDIC says so. The Federal Deposit Insurance Company protects me and my U.S. dollars. Um, which, by the way, have been cryptocurrency ever since we gave up the gold standard, right? U.S. dollars are as crypto as Bitcoin. It's just that they're better regulated and better branded. <laughs> so one could argue, right? That's just that's just my opinion, right? But but like, if you want to invest crypto, there's liquidity pools, there's staking, there's all sorts of financial instruments that exist in the crypto industry, and it's fascinating if you're into you know if you're into how money works. Um, and it's decentralized, which means there is no broker, there is no banker, there are no, you know, three or four middle people to scrape, generally speaking, about 20% of the productivity value of that of that coin. So that's why I can go and buy some like US dollar coins and put them in uh put them in a liquidity pool or some staking instrument, and I can earn 20% very safely on my essentially my US dollar coin, stable coin savings account. If I go put that same money in the Bank of America, I'm going to get 0.3%. And, and it's not that my US dollars aren't earning 20% at Bank of America. It's just that I don't get to keep the 20. I get to keep 0.3 and Bank of America and its machinery keeps the other 19.7. And so, so DeFi, decentralized finance, decentralized exchanges, it's really cool for those reasons. But you also don't have the FDIC. You don't have the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp to protect you if Steve decides to steal my crypto wallet because he like saw it sitting right, you know, like, and so like you're, if you get ripped off, there is zero recourse. And, and that's the important thing from my perspective to let people that are new to this industry, yeah, get into it. But but keep in mind that in the 1850s or the 1840s, back in San Francisco, California gold rush days, it wasn't the guy who found the gold who showed up in San Francisco and exchanged it for money. It was the guy who killed the guy who killed the guy who found the gold that ended up in San Francisco. <laughs> like Those are the people that got rich in the gold rush and the guys that sold shovels, right? You know, but the first person was like, hey, I found some clunk. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that worked, man. <laughs> yeah, we're in the so, wild, wild west now. Yeah. We've got a very interesting NFT project going on to actually build, what is it, the first carbon neutral roller coaster? What's that about? Tell us. Okay. So, so, so the, the quickie version of it is like once upon a time in, uh, when my when my kid Lyle was 11 years old, we were sitting in the backyard talking about stuff, and somehow or another, the conversation around roller coasters came up. We had just been back from a trip, and and we got to thinking, wouldn't it be cool if there if we had our own roller coaster? And um and and I agreed 100 percent that that would be cool. And in, and in a couple of seconds, I I kind of realized a couple of things. First of all, if if I were to do that, if I were to build my kid a roller coaster, um. It would be an experience and adventure that that he and I could take with us, you know, th for the rest of our lives. And maybe he would build one for his kids. And it would be it would be a thing that you know a completely crazy, out of the ordinary, wonderful experience. And I love the idea of him being able to say to his friends and colleagues, you know, decades down the road, it's like you know, crazy thing, my dad did that, right? And the other thing that I realized right away in that same moment was 
if I if I did this, it would prove a hundred percent once and for all that I am just like so much better of a dad than my brother, and uh, and which which that is also an objective fact, right? I'm I'm pretty good. So <laughs> so we built a roller coaster, and we sent we put videos up on YouTube to show Grandma Lois, you know, the progress because she lived far away, and somebody saw one of the videos. Somebody from Hackaday saw one of the videos. Guy Kawasaki saw one of the videos and posted it, and. Before you know it, Good Morning America shows up with a crew to film the thing. And then I'm on good GMA one day and we get like starting to get more subscribers. And and I liked all of that. So we built another coaster and another and another. Um, so today I've built like five backyard roller coasters. There's a Netflix show about me building one of my backyard roller coasters. And so like, so I'm known, right? Which brings us to community. Um uh, millions of people all over the world know who I am because of this crazy roller coaster nonsense, right? And I've gotten gigs. I've gotten like speaking gigs. I mean, just like so many things have happened because I said yes to this ridiculous question from an 11 year old boy. Um, we got to thinking a couple of weeks ago, me and some of my other backyard roller coaster friends, we got to thinking, it's like, you know, what would be cool if we, if we were to like build kind of a space mountain. What if we were to build like an indoor roller coaster that was sort of like space mountain and we use projection mapping and maybe build a little motion simulator as part of it and costumes and theming and like Disney level stuff. Um, that would be cool, but who the hell can pay for that, right? You, you know, that's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then... In the meantime, on, the, on a similar, on a parallel track, I'm talking to all my clients about the stuff you and I are talking about. What does crypto do? What does NFTs do? How do you make money in that? How do you save money? What's, the, what's that look like? And so, so I just want to build a roller coaster, Steve. I think it's going to be a heap of fun. So we created this NFT project called the Coaster Punks. Um, and you can go to coasterpunks.com and join the Discord. And there's more information every day. Um, I first put up a video in in this warehouse that I've got near nearby, 3,000 foot warehouse, 25 feet high. I was like, what if we did kind of a thing in here and we funded it with an NFT? And then somebody put up a comment. It's like, okay, yeah, but NFT, I don't know, environmental stuff. And so then we were like, okay, well, let's build a coaster. If we sell out the NFT, we'll be able to build the coaster. And you know, we'll probably also be able to put like 120,000 watt solar farm on the roof of the building and then that would kind of answer the 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 you know environmental problem. Uh, for your reference, 120,000 watts of solar power is enough to power 10 American homes uh, ongoing because that's because your average American home pulls 10,000 uh, 10, kilowatt hours per month. So, so we'll build a solar farm. And then I was talking to some friends of mine at a, com a company called Explore Media and they build educational STEM, STEAM, television series for teens and tweens. And I was talking to Jenny Bucos and Carrie Byron who own that business and run that business. And they were like, oh my gosh, if you do that, would you, could we like film it and make an educational series about it? That'd be so cool. And so, so the mission of Coaster Punks is, you know, you can buy the NFT and the NFTs will cost about 300 bucks, 222 Matic. I think we're doing it on Polygon because it uses very little energy. Um, the, the mission will be, we're going to build the ride, which is going to be a space Artemis moonshot themed ride. And it's going to be freaking amazing. We're going to build the solar farm to harness the sun so that we're, so that we're carbon negative, which is good, by the way. Carbon negative means you're putting more energy into the system than you're taking out. And we're going to film the build with, uh, with the Explore Media, Carrie Byron folks. Um, and there will be... And then in terms of utility, which we talked about, when you buy an NFT, there'll be different kinds of utilities with different rarities. And so like, so like, I think, what is it? I got a spreadsheet over here. So 10,000 pieces, 10,000 NFTs, 2,000 of those will be invited to the launch event and to be able to come and ride the ride. And so, and, and so like, if you live in LA, we're in Connecticut, you get that one, you can sell it to somebody or get on a plane or whatever. But so, and then we'll do all sorts of other fun stuff, right? Everybody's going to get a t-shirt. Everybody is going to get a t-shirt. Right? And so, so we'll have the moonshot t-shirt, the coaster punks t-shirt. You can come and help us on build days. There's all sorts of different ways we want to interact with people and, and honor this community 
that that weirdly enough, I've been like building for the last 10 years. And so, and that's the real, for me, that's been the real lesson of this, of this adventure, of this NFT adventure is like, you really need to like know what you're doing. Like a lot of people will be, will go out there and say, Hey, we're going to drop an NFT and it's going to be beautiful art and all of that. And then we're going to uh, feed children. That's what we'll do. We'll feed children. Okay, cool. How many philanthropies have you run? How, how much food have you given to children in your past? It's like, Oh, well, okay. We're going to, and so like you can, it's very easy to know if an NFT project is all about the NFT or all about the project. And I, I believe that split should be about 80, 20. My, the, the coaster punks NFT is 80% project and 20% NFT. Like we're building, we're going to build, like we've got retired Disney Imagineers working on design for this coaster. We've got astronauts interested and and talking to us about this thing because we're basing it, you know, we're working around the, the Artemis moon program. We've got Mythbusters who are, who are backing this project and want us to succeed. And so let's, it's like a real, weirdly real thing because it excites the imagination. The NFT stuff is fun and, and, but it's weird, but like, but the joy and the love that we're bringing to the thing in the form of the project is real and it's tangible. And that's, I think a very, very important lesson for people who want to get into the NFT business, you have to bring something that you know how to do. You can't make shit up. The 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 part of the NFT that we're all making up as we go, that's plenty. <laughs> the rest of it, like your book, what you do, you know what you're talking about. You know how to run those events. You know how to deliver the utilities that you're talking about. And if you don't know that, if you're making all of that up, then then that's, you know, you're going to fail. How do people find out and follow you on this? You can go to coasterpunks.com right now. That's just the discord channel. Soon there'll be uh, very soon. There'll be an actual website where you can, you know, you can register, you can reserve, uh, you can reserve a coaster punk. We're, we're, um, we're looking to probably drop the actual collections sometime in May or June of 2022. Um, but in my in my mind's eye, I really want the NFT to drop on the same day that Artemis One rocket lifts off, um, leaves leaves Pad Thirty Nine B. Um, they, they're rolling back into the vehicle assembly building this week to to fix a couple of things, and so that's a little bit in flux right now. But um, but you can go to Coaster Punks and learn coasterpunks.com and learn as much as there is as much as there is to learn. And we just we love this idea. And then, and again, in terms of utilities, Disneyland VIP tour for two Disneyland park hopper tickets, Disney world park hopper tickets, an invitation to the moonshot launch event, um, a, the, an, an invitation to the pre event. You can be the, you can, there's one NFT that you can be the first person to ride the coaster at the event. Right. And there's only, obviously there's only one first person. So like yeah. all of this really, really cool stuff, tons of swag and, um, and and our mission is to teach especially teens and tweens about sustainability and becoming an interplanetary species that's the mission and that always has been the mission of you know from my very first youtube video the mission has been to help to bring physics family and fun to kids everywhere that's like the tagline you got a bundle of energy and I'm I'm not normally beaten out by someone more energetic than me, but Will, <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. So they can find out about you at Coaster Punks. Yep. Uh, do you have any social uh, channels or just search up on Coaster Punks? You, you can find me on all the things that just like Will Pemble, one word, you know, sort of like whatever it is, dot com slash Will Pemble. There I am. Good enough. Look, you've been a charm. It's been great fun. I'm smiling. I'm looking forward to sharing this out. Um, just... Good luck on you, man. I think that's brilliant. Anyone wants to ride one of the first roller coasters funded by NFTs, then you've got to search this guy up on Coaster Punks. Will, thank you very much for being on the show. Cheers, Steve. Thanks for having me.